got to be somebody that knows this. So you go to the experts and ask them. And so I asked all these people one after the other, and none of them had it. None of them. And I was getting really freaked about that. That's when I first started saying, they don't know. Nobody really knows. This whole thing is a big sham. This whole thing is a big sham. You guys are watching Talks with Ryan. Like, share, and subscribe. And let's get in to today's video. Dr. Kerry Mullis. Now, if you guys haven't ever heard of him until now, then you're definitely going to be in for a treat. Kerry Mullis was an American biochemist who invented in 1983 the RT PCR test, which stands for Reverse Transcription Polymerase Chain Reaction Test. The exact same test that's being used every single day in the United States of America. According to the Trump administration, they've been using this test around 500,000 times a day. And now they're even wanting to use the test even more. Now in 1993, Kerry Mullis won the Nobel Prize for his RT-PCR test. And he also won the same award in Japan that exact same year. Now, even though this video isn't about the recent virus, don't go anywhere, guys, because it still has some really important information that will allow you to see exactly who Carrie Mullis was, along with how the big, you know, corporations really and truly function behind closed doors. Let's get in to this interview. I was working on a project where we were measuring HIV in people's blood at this place called uh, Specialty Laboratories in Santa Monica. I was just an, a, a consultant there. And I came in about three days a month and we were working on that and at some point we needed to re-up our, our grant from the NIH to work on that and I had to write it. And so the first line of that was HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. And I wrote that and then I said, well, I need a paper some kind of scientific paper to reference that statement because when you make a scientific a statement like that that's like a fact you need to say here's how come I know that right you put a little one if it's the first statement you've made and then you put down at the bottom of the paper you have a one and you say here's a paper by somebody that describes why that statement is true right and so I said, to, I said well, well what's that I don't know let me think about it. what is that paper who do I go to for that and I looked around, I asked a couple of virologists at that company, and they said, no, you don't have to reference that. I said, I have to reference that, because I, I don't know where that came from. How do I know that? Now, this all on its own shows Kerry's professionalism in his work. He wants to show his work with a reference to prove that his findings are true. This way, whatever documents he comes up with in the future will carry his name, in which all of his work comes with that exact same integrity. And it turned out that nobody knew it. There wasn't a scientific reference, like a, a paper that somebody had submitted with like experimental data in it and like logical discussion and said, here's how come we know that HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. There was nothing out there like that. Nothing. Can you tell about your experience when you met Luke Montenegro for the first time and you questioned him about his... Well... So... Kerry Mullis won't just pencil whip this report. He goes out and finds a reference, and not just any source of reference. He finds the 2008 Nobel Prize winning doctor in physiology or medicine, Luc Montagnier. This was the man who discovered HIV. So if anybody in the world should know that HIV is the cause of AIDS, it would be Luc Montagnier. Now guys, listen to this next part. By the time I met Luc Montagnier, I had met a lot of AIDS researchers at meetings, and I had always gone up to them. If they, if they talked like they knew about H, HIV and AIDS, I always went up to them afterwards and I said, where can I find a scientific reference that I can use for my... Remember I said I had a sentence there. It said HIV is the probable cause of AIDS, and I needed to have that backed up by something before I could write it and submit it. And I went around, I asked a whole lot of people. I said, well, the people, you know, I can't find it. I, at first I looked for it, you know, just in, in 
like computer searching kind of stuff like that. But then I said, there's got to be somebody that knows this. So you go to the experts and ask them. And so I asked all these people one after the other, and none of them had it. None of them. And I was getting really freaked about that. That's when I first started saying, they don't know. Nobody really knows. This whole thing is a big sham. It's ridiculous. But then finally Montagnier came to a, there was a, a special little seminar down in San Diego where an old friend of Robert Gallo's, Flossie Wangstall, was opening up a Department of AIDS Research down in San Diego. They All right, let me explain who Robert Gallo's is. Robert Gallo's is who he just mentioned in this video. And it's going to help all this story make a whole lot more sense. Now, when HIV was originally founded, the virus, when it was first discovered, there was two teams. Robert Gallo's had a team in the United States based out of Maryland. Luc Montagnier had a team based out of Paris, France. And even though everybody in that field says that Robert Gallo's team was the first to find it overall, Montagnier ended up taking the Nobel Prize for those findings. Now this article that I just had on the screen, I will put the link to that article in the description of this video so you guys can go read on into it. But it's pretty interesting on what happened and how the whole thing began and the war between Gallows and Montagnier. But for now, let's get back into this interview. Lots of money involved, federal money. And they had Montagnier come there and give a talk. And after that, they had a little wine and cheese thing. And I went over to Montagnier afterwards and I said, uh, Dr. Montagnier, I, 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 have a, I can't find a uh, reference. Like who, I can't find a reference to go with the statement, HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. I, I'm sure you can help me. And he, he knew that he probably should be able to help me. Again, guys, Luc Montagnier is the 2008 Nobel Prize winner for discovering HIV. He should be able to answer Mullis' questions with ease. Now, at this point in the video, I hope you guys are starting to see exactly why Luc Montagnier may have been selected to be the winner of that Nobel Prize for those very findings. He said, well, why don't you quote this new work, this, and by new he meant like something that came out this year, right? This new work about a, 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 a virus that can kill uh, monkeys, or I think it was not monkeys, it was like uh, something related to monkeys, some kind of a baby, a little ape. And, and I had read that and I said, that didn't, it was like, supposedly going to be a model system for studying AIDS, that somebody had figured out some kind of retrovirus that passing it back and forth between various mammals, they could, prob they could finally put it into chimpanzees and kill them. And it killed them in about a week, and it didn't kill them in any, there was nothing like AIDS there, you know. It, it doesn't kill you in a week. It was just totally ridiculous. It, none of the symptoms were the same. And I said, I said, well, you know, I read that paper, and I didn't, I didn't see any connection between that and AIDS, and I and I and I, I don't think that would be a real. I wouldn't want to use that as a reference. And uh, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I know he walked away. Oh, no! Before he told me about that paper, he said, "Why don't you use the NIH, like the the CDC report?" And I said, "Well, I looked at that, and that was not a scientific paper." And then he said. What about this other thing, this, this, this like paper that had just come out about a month before and, and it, a lot of fanfare associated with that paper, but it was total crap. It was like, yeah, if you got two million dollars, you can figure out how to kill a primate with a retrovirus. So what? Doesn't have anything to do with AIDS. It didn't look like AIDS, it didn't smell like AIDS, it wasn't AIDS. It didn't look like AIDS, it didn't smell like AIDS, it wasn't AIDS. It was just like, got a retrovirus that can kill a chimpanzee, so what? So, I, I didn't get any more out of him. He walked away after that. And the people standing around, by the way, who were his colleagues there, looked at him like they were thinking he should come up with a better answer than that. But he couldn't, and that's, he just turned around and walked away. I really thought he'd have an answer. 
I really did. I mean, that was my last, I was right at the edge of my, my faith in the system. But I thought, Montagnier will know why he thinks HIV causes it. And he'll tell me. He'll say, because of this study. You know, but he didn't have that. None of those guys have that. And that's why they're so, they're so weird. You know, that's why they don't want to say, they don't want people like me walking up and asking them those kind of questions. And they're willing to like go to great lengths to prevent that. They're out on a limb. I wouldn't want to be there with them. Well, guys, sadly, Carrie Mullis passed away at the age of 74 on August 7th of 2019, about one year to the date before they decided to use his PCR test. Now, reports say that he died of pneumonia, and others are stating that he died from heart and respiratory failure. Mullis was called an unconventional type of doctor, and he was also criticized, especially over this HIV bit. Now, it's said to have cost him some credibility among his scientific peers, and hopefully that's all it cost They're him. They're willing to like go to great lengths to prevent that. They're out on a limb. I wouldn't want to be there with them. Guys, real quick before you go, like always, make sure and try to leave this video a thumbs up, share it on all your social media platforms, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel or if you're new to this channel, please make sure and mash that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you guys will know when I post a new video. Other than that, take care of yourself, don't ever stop asking questions, and I will see you all in the next video.